are going to start with our first lightning talk of the afternoon, which is with Ross Goldenberg. He is the co-founder and co-CEO of Site Comply, um, and he's going to talk about the triple bottom line, leveraging private companies to improve the lives of citizens and create jobs while enhancing your open data program. That's a mouthful, so we'll see if he can do it in 10 minutes. <laughs> Thanks. Ross? All right, did you guys have a good lunch? Yeah. I was told that I have to keep you guys excited here. <laughs> uh, which is what I'm going to do. So when the Socrata folks uh, called me up and said, Ross, we'd love you to come talk uh, today at our conference, I, uh, they said, what do you want to talk about? And I thought to myself, I want to talk about love in the 21st century. Um, <laughs> exciting, right? And they said, well, we need something that is business oriented and it's going to sound really serious. Uh, so I came up with the name, the triple bottom line, leveraging private companies to improve the lives of citizens and create jobs while enhancing your open data program. Um, wow, that, that, that is a mouthful. Um, but one of the wonderful things about uh, having, having the podium and standing up here is once you get up here, there's nothing that they can do to pull you <laughs> off or very little things you can do. So, I decided, you know what, we're going to talk about love uh, in the 21st century uh, here today and, and love for, for two things. Number one is, this is a laser pointer, holy cow. Um, what button do I press to advance it? Obviously. So uh, what we're going to talk about is, uh, is love in the 21st century and, and what this really is about is how I as a private company love open data and therefore I love you guys, um, very, very PC, right? And number two, why you as, uh, as governments should love me, uh, or more importantly, why you should love uh, private companies and what a private company like mine does for the open data uh, ecosystem. Um, so before I talk about that, let me tell you a little bit about my company and why this is uh, such an important topic to, to me. So I'm the co-founder of a company based in New York City called SiteComply. Um, and what SiteComply does is it takes a ton of public data, all of it, almost all of it public data, um, from sources like Socrata, like the Open Data Initiative, um, from government licenses that we have to get data, and from just about anywhere we can find it, all on the housing market. We take all that information, we put it through through a proprietary uh, set of technologies, some algorithms. We have like really smart uh, technologists and researchers, and we try to make sense of this all. Um, why do we try to make sense of this all? What do we try to do with it? Well, what we do with it uh, is we take it and we bring it back to owners and managers of folks in New York City who operate real estate so that they can operate their buildings more efficiently um, and that they, so they can operate their buildings more safely. So to give you a couple examples here, um, it's our technology that tells the folks who run the Empire State Building when one of their 87 different elevators uh, is coming due for an elevator inspection. It's our technology which is used at the World Trade Center construction site to tell uh, the folks at the World Trade Center of their hundreds of permits when their permits are coming up for renewal um, so they can keep that site safe. And it's our technology which is used across uh, low income housing in the Bronx to help the landlords and the managers of those, uh, of those housing uh, developments know when their tenants have called in a complaint to 3 on one telling them that there, there's no heat. So probably get a pretty good sense uh, by now of why I love you guys. I've created a company uh, over the last five or six years that has uh, largely been based on the ability to get data from the government. But let me tell you a little bit about why I'd like you guys to love me and some of the stuff we're doing in New York City to foster us in that ecosystem. Or more specifically, um, how to get value in involving private companies uh, like myself in your open data initiative. Part of my job is going out and talking to folks um, in city government, in open data initiatives, and talking to them about how they can leverage me uh, in their ecosystem. Um, in talking, having these conversations, uh, I spend a lot of time hearing about uh, common complaints and common problems with people in their open open data initiatives. Here are three that I hear a ton. Um, so people tell me, I have tons of valuable data, which isn't inherently a problem in and of itself. Um, it's only a problem when you have limited resources and a limited ability to take that data and to bring it out to the public to, to use it for, for good. Um, and then the last problem I hear, not from everybody, um, but from a lot of folks, is, okay, my open data program is up and running. I have a ton of stuff to do on my agenda, and uh, I have a need to, to justify the investment that the city or the municipality is 
making in my open data program and a need to, uh, to find ways to prove out my model, to expand my program, to get more funds, to hire more folks to, to bring this data uh, to fruition, to create good in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the community. Um, so those are the, the, the problems that I hear. And let me tell you the ways that we get involved with, uh, with the cities and, and with the municipalities to help them. Um, so on the tons of valuable data uh, standpoint, you guys have a lot of data. We have a, a huge need for accurate, reliable, and recent data. Um, one of the things that is very important to our business is accurate data and recent data. There are decisions that are being made based on open data by our clients that are literally life and death decisions about the maintenance of buildings, about the, um, the inspection of elevator cars. Um, so this stuff is hugely important to us. And um, one of the things we spend a lot of time doing is working with um, various agencies in New York City to have conversations with them about, and, and to, to play the role of a subject matter expertise, where we are uh, basically representing the interests of the housing community, not because we're trying to lobby for anything, but because this is, this is our baby. This is what we know. This is what we love. So there's a lot of examples in the, the early days of New York City's open data program um, where you know, community uh, hearings were held and people were submitting uh, you know, thoughts on data through tweets and the like. And I think where we've evolved in New York City is, yes, we still have that. Um, but when you want to really understand the needs of, of, uh, of sp specific data topics, the authoritative source, um, I highly encourage you to think about who in your community actually has expertise on the data you're publishing and how you can leverage them to help prioritize that data on, uh, on what you want to publish and, uh, and, and what that data actually means, which brings me to to, uh, to the second point, you guys have limited resources, right? Only so many hours in the day, only so many workers who can take that data and, uh, and, and publish it and support it and maintain it. Unfortunately um, for me, I have a ton of engineers and data scientists, and all they do all day long is look at your data. Um, and, and what I encourage you all to do, I, I saw a look in the back, like, what the heck? You just look at my data all day long? Yes, that's what we do, because we create a product from it. Um, and what I highly encourage uh, you guys to do is to create that conversation. Why? Um, because there are several examples of, of New York City agencies who we've engaged with, who we've created that conversation, and they now rely on us to be an extension of their team uh, in order to uh, vet their data. So when a new data set is coming out, maybe they're taking data that's on a website and they're putting it into a package they're going to put on Socrata. They might give us an early preview and we will literally sit there with the data, with the website, and help them understand where there may be data discrepancies or where their data might not be well documented or well formatted. And that becomes a huge value to them, obviously a huge value to us as well as we take that data and we bring it to owners and managers of real estate. Last but not least, uh, in terms of the need to justify investment in an expansion of the open data program, um, we are very much and love to be the poster child for open data success and initiatives. Um, we have spent a lot of time with the Socrata folks. We spent a lot of time inside New York City with New York City agencies talking about the fact that we have created, just in New York, uh, 60 jobs from open data, from your data. Um, we have uh, improved the safety for 500,000 residential apartment units within New York City. Um, we have uh, improved the quality of life and the operation of uh, over a billion square feet of real estate. And in doing so, are affecting the lives of literally 10,000 uh, folks who work in the real estate industry to allow them to do their jobs easier by getting that data and getting insights from it and, uh, and, and, and working uh, more efficiently. So my advice to you guys, uh, look into private industry. Find yourself some poster children to help carry this message on why your open data programs are important. They're obviously important to, to the folks like us as well. I'll leave you with one last thought, and that is uh, on uh, funding open data. Now, I don't fund open data programs, so don't come after me uh, afterwards and ask me to, to open my checkbooks. But uh, a little uh, quick anecdote on ways that we've been able to, um, to help fund or to help support the open data initiative in New York. So there are very specific data sets that, that we've looked at for years and years and years and had, had discussions with, uh, with city government on being able to get access to that through open data or just privately. We, we 
we don't care either way. And one of the challenges is, wow, this data we know is extremely important to you, extremely important to the citizens, but is locked up somewhere in a mainframe, and I have no resources uh, in order to get that out of the mainframe and put it on Socrata. Um, one of the things that we've done with much success is use the Freedom of Information Act laws um, to help fund that. So Freedom of Information Act allows uh, me as a private citizen to pay uh, through the records access officers uh, money for preparation of those documents. So when an agency is open and willing, um, an agency may ask me to submit a FOIA request. I submit that request. I'll get back a quote for the amount of cost it's going to take to prepare that data. Um, they prepare that data. I pay my fee. And all of a sudden, you've taken that data. You've unlocked that data. And they can also take that and publish it on Socrata. And you've, a lot of that effort has been used to you know, write the code that now you can run that process over and over and over and just publish it into your open data program. So a little sly, tricky, but perfectly legal way uh, to, uh, to work with private companies who are very interested in your data uh, to, to get some more momentum in your private data programs. Thank you. I love you guys.